The impact of dementia is universal. Worldwide, there are 36 million people with dementia today, and the number is projected to grow to 115 million by 2050. The current cost of dementia worldwide is estimated at 604 billion US dollars per year, and is expected to increase even more quickly than the prevalence of dementia. This is not only a major health problem for governments worldwide, um, but also a significant social issue. No one should live in shame because they have a medical diagnosis of dementia. It is unacceptable. Dementia is the third leading cause of death uh, in Australia. So the, uh, the prevalence relative to other health conditions uh, is extremely high. And one of the most important factors is that we haven't found a cure at this stage. Love, Loss and Laughter uh, is a concept that was developed uh, by Kathy Greenblatt, um, an American sociologist. What Kathy's trying to do is really capture the heart and the essence of the person and really take us into their lives. And uh, I think that she does that particularly successfully. When you look at Kathy's photographs, you will see how different cultures and communities around the world embrace dementia in all sorts of ways, from painting and music therapy in Japan, interacting with animals in the United States and Australia, and to chanting in India. These examples of social engagement show that life goes on after a diagnosis of dementia and that people with dementia continue to have needs for social interaction and engagement in the same way as other members in our community. Love, Loss and Laughter builds on our aim to develop a society which acknowledges dementia as a condition, something that people live with not something that should isolate them from everyday activities that they have a right to enjoy. One of the issues of people's perceptions of dementia is that they think of dementia as only in the very late stage, whereas in fact dementia is a slowly progressing condition. People have the idea that dementia is it's like a crocodile that comes and takes a big bite out of your brain and it's all gone all at once. And it's really more like a mouse that's nibbling on a big piece of cheese and things go little by little. And even at the late stage, uh, we are finding that uh, people are still able to participate in several activities if they're given the time and the patience uh, and the support. Gary does still drive um, and his driving is, is quite good at the moment. You're, you're most familiar in the, the sort of the area where we live. Um, and uh, I think if we venture further out, um, his, his orientation in in, in terms of where he is in Melbourne and all that sort of stuff isn't so good. But in terms of, you know, the actual practice of driving and, um, you know, knowing the road rules and all that sort of stuff, that's sort of quite a lifelong skill. Frank still likes to put the petrol into the car and is quite able to do that. So I encourage him to do any, anything that he's happy to do. What about or, your soups? Or you make soups? Soups and um, toast and toasted sandwiches. Mm. And I, I I eat a lot of um, um, oh what's it called? Tell me a bit more. Oh, eat it. You know the that lovely thing I love to eat. Cereal. Cereal. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Cereal. Mm. <laughs> I think I potter around. I don't. I, I realise I'm not achieving very much, but I, you know, now and again I'll pull out a few weeds, and it's not an organised garden as I used to be. Gary loves his chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like little kids. They follow you around. Yeah, I like being outside. Yes, I think I have a little look over the newspaper, and uh, but I don't concentrate it on it on it as I used to. So it's just a matter of adjusting, really, isn't it, to 
to work within you know Gary's capabilities and and still you know reach out and and do um, bits and pieces that he really enjoys doing. If you think about the way we talk about people with dementia often they talk about the person is disappearing they're an empty shell they're a shadow of their former self they're not here anymore that's not really my mother I'm losing the person and and, and those those are very common terms and they reflect the way we think which I'm hoping to try to change and have us see it differently and say there's still a whole person there she may not remember some things or she might repeat herself more often or she may be, be withdrawn because she knows that she's making mistakes and things that she says things of that sort but there's a whole person has to be treated and respected that's there and I don't think you can look at some of the faces and the brightness in the eyes when something touches them and not see that there's a real person there. What I really like about this exhibition is that it helps spread the message that people with dementia remain first and foremost human beings and should not be defined by their condition. The wife of one of the men that I photographed said his life just turned around once he found the men's shed and started going there because he didn't feel that kind of social isolation that all too often is what happens to people. That, that they, they may be with their family, but they, they feel less and less comfortable going out into the world. The family feels less comfortable taking them out. So to the extent that we create places that are welcoming, in this case it's the men's sheds, but I know there's a big, a big movement to trying to make a lot more dementia-friendly communities in Australia, as has been done in the Netherlands and is being done in the United Kingdom, uh, that we can make places that people feel welcome, that they can get out of the house, they can see other people, and the men's shed seemed to be a, just a beautiful example of that. Frank also goes to McLeod Cottages two days a week, from about 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Uh, they have activities there, and uh, there are other people also attending. Uh, which gives him extra uh, socialising, which is wonderful. But they're very caring, lovely people, and, and that's a secure feeling for me, because I know during the day, well, Frank is uh, being cared for. And, uh, and then I just do a few things that I like to do for myself. Many people think that dementia uh, is purely a condition of old age, and this is in fact uh, not accurate. Certainly the prevalence of dementia increases with age, so that by the age of 85 you have about one in four chances of developing dementia. But we know that in Australia there are an estimated 23,000 people under the age of 65 with dementia. Over there, there's a photograph of a young couple. This is Gary and Mandy Lovell. Gary is now, I think he's just turned 50, but uh, he was diagnosed in his 40s. And he's been very, very active at trying to create awareness in other people about what this is to have younger onset dementia. Um, he's spoken to groups, he goes to places, Mandy goes to places. Um, and they're trying really to be vehicles of education and understanding for people that this can affect younger people. And many of the programs that have been developed are really for older people. And so there now is a big activity that's going on from Alzheimer's, from Alzheimer's Australia here in Victoria and nationwide to help people of that age. The awareness of younger onset dementia is really increasing in Australia and in fact um, the government has just introduced a younger onset dementia key worker program to address this issue. But this is very recent and we still have a long way to go in uh, providing appropriate levels of support um, for younger people. One of Gary's dreams is to actually see um, a a, a residential service for younger people with dementia only. Mm. So. Gary had this lovely idea of um, creating a foundation and we've called it the Lovell Foundation and that's all about trying to um, see a better future and create some more options for younger people uh, with dementia um, who are facing um, residential placement so that they can remain active and um, if, if remain they, engaged all together. Because yeah. the age is, is similar. Yeah. I think you would you would pr much prefer to be around people your own age well, I think with similar every, interests and things. Everyone would. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm not sure there would be a lot of bingo going on there, but it would be more yeah. tennis and gardening. Or just things that people like doing. Yeah, whatever they like to yeah. do. Because if you're still active, you'll find yourself better than just doing nothing. Mm. And it's good for you to move and keep fit. active and fit and be happy and laughing and all kinds of good things. Mm. And we're raising mm. money as well. Gary's about to um, put himself to the test in a couple of weeks time. He's mm. going in a running event. So he's running 10 kilometers. You're going to get out there and prove that people with dementia can run. Run. <laughs> They'll be wearing t-shirts to let everybody know that younger people get dementia as well and, and that younger people with dementia can, you know, they're fit and they're healthy and, um, and you very can, active. You can do things. One of the things that you felt in, the, in their presence, I was spent a few hours with them in Christmas Hills, was that they're just full of trying to taste every delicious minute of life that they can and uh, so I think that you can put a, a spin on it to say it's very tragic to have this disease looming and taking over more and more space in their lives but it's pushed them to really maximize their enjoyment of every minute that they have together of good health and we should all do that I mean, we don't have to be faced with a disease or with a, you know, a chronic illness uh, to say maybe we could all do more to take advantage of the good things and tell people we love that we love them and do activities that we enjoy and uh, make life as rich as we can do. Most of us, irrespective of how our health develops over our life, want to stay at home for as long as we can. And it's no different for people with dementia. Traditionally, um, we have really admitted people with dementia to nursing homes far too early. We're now learning that a person can stay satisfactorily at home uh, with a lot of support and that there are supports available through organisations such as Alzheimer's Australia and through our local government and through support groups in the community. We want to keep Gary at home for as long as possible, of course. Um, and um, in order to do that, we've just had to make some adjustments and changes around the house. So we do things like um, we keep a diary. You can go and have a look at that at any time and you know what's on. Or um, where, where you've gone. Yep, where I'll be and all those sorts of yeah. things. We have someone in to, to do the, the cleaning and, and that's a help. And uh, use my energies in, in other ways then. We also label everything, don't we? So we've got signs everywhere. You don't have to ask as many questions and things either. It just allows you to go and, and do what you need to do sometimes. The main role of Alzheimer's Australia is to represent the interests of families and carers, of people living with dementia. In particular, we want to try and remove the stigma that's associated with dementia and put it into a much more positive light. Our vision is that dementia-friendly organisations will train their staff and display a symbol so that people with dementia can be confident of accessing the services they need. And I'm thinking of organisations like Centrelink, banks, retailers, art galleries. I'm showing photographs from a lot of countries, not because I have a comparative basis, but because the things that work, work every place. Smiles, taking time with people, touch, hugging, uh, music, art, stimulation of any kind. Yeah, be, be having a laugh. Be happy, yeah. That's all very important. Do what you can, that's what, that's what I think. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. That's a great message. Don't, don't wait. <laughs> don't put people with dementia all in the same box and don't think of them as not having abilities. Everybody does have an ability, even though their cognitive status is changing, they have an ability to feel, to interact, and we need to try and enter into their world rather than reject them. It's our job to keep life still joyous for people who have a diagnosis. It's not their job, that's our task, and we can do it. Our job is to say, what's still there? And how do we find that, and how do we nourish it? and how do we stimulate it, 
or find new things that they might enjoy now and not treat it as, a, as only the losses. That's why I call it love, loss, and laughter. There, there is loss and it's real and it's painful, but that's not the whole picture. And I think this is more the whole picture, that there are whole people that are waiting to have us continue to be their friends and, uh, and, and they said, we ought to rise to that challenge.